Hey guys, okay, so if you remember in class, I started with this, and it was a really big deal to make sure that some of your tabs were grouped at times, and then some of your tabs weren't grouped at times. So I want you to remember, if you look down here at the very bottom, down over here, you'll see United States, Canada, Australia, and all locations. Each one of these, if you click on them, they're called tabs, okay? I know that sounds stupid, but just remember that, all right? So the first step, it says Olivia Clausen is a product analyst. So in other words, we're going to analyze the sales that um, are for audiobooks and stuff like that, right? So they're in the United States, Canada, and Australia. And they want to make sure, on number one, that we group the United States, Canada, and Australia worksheets. All right, if you right click any of these tabs, you'll see there's no word that says ungroup or group. That means they're not group, okay? So I'm going to click on the United States. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and I'm gonna click Canada and I'm gonna click Australia. And they should automatically group. I'm gonna let go of the shift key and if I click on any of them, you'll see now that it says ungroup. If I go to Canada and right click, it says ungroup, okay? That means they're all grouped. All right, that was number one. Then it says in H1 of the United States worksheet, United States tab, H1 is going to be the date tab. Enter a formula using the today function. You can do one of two things because it's a really simple function is you can either use the function key up here and search for today hit go when it pops it up double click and just hit OK now just to double check click on your Canada if there's a date in H1 you did it right you're grouped check on Australia if there's a date in there, that means you're all groups. You're good, okay? Number two, the text science fantasy and then change it to science fiction. So it wants us to find science fantasy. Science fantasy is by A and it's A10. And they want us to change it to fiction. Make sure your lowercase is on. And I'm going to type the word fiction. And just tab out of it, okay? Now, because I'm paranoid, I check Canada, and I check United States, and they all say science fiction. All right. Number three says use the month name in the cell H5. Okay, well, H is over here again. Here's 5, May. To fill the range I5 to O5 with the remaining months. If you remember how we just scroll to the corner and you get that little black plus, hold down the button, your mouse button, and scroll across, and then let go. And you'll see it'll show up May to December. Okay, number four. Olivia wants us to use cell formatting in the merge cells in H6. She wants us to create a new style called subhead. All right. I'm going to click on H6 because that's the cell she tells us, tells us to go to. Up here is all of our styles. I'm going to come click here, the down guy, and I'm going to go to new cell style. And I'm going to type the word subhead. Make sure that the S is capitalized. It's capital S, lowercase u, b, h, e, a, d. Leave everything else the same. Click OK. And it creates a brand new cell style. Now, if I was to click this again, you're going to find it right here at the top. See where it says custom? They're up here. OK. Now, it says for 4B, apply the subhead style to H8. So this is H and that one's 8. I'm going to come up to my cell styles. I'm going to look in my custom area to subhead. I'm going to click on it. Now again, because I'm paranoid, let's check Canada. Canada should look the exact same, right? Got the May through December, and so should Australia. All right, well, that means we're doing something good. Okay, number five 
says project the number of downloads in June to November by filling the series for the first projection range H7 to 07 with a linear trend. All right. They want us to go to H7. So H7 happens to be this 3,742. I'm going to hold my mouse down and I'm going to go all the way to 07 because that's what it says to do so that this is all highlighted. I'm going to go to fill over here is fill and I'm going to go down to series. Now, if I look at this little box that it gives me, it says linear and trend. And that's what they wanted. So it says projection with a linear trend. I'm going to leave linear and I'm going to click on trend and I'm going to click OK. All right. Now, the next one is six where it says Olivia also wants to know more stuff, of course. We're going to project the number of downloads in June to December. And this time we're going to use a growth series with a step of 1.03. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing kind of in here, just a little bit different. So I'm going to highlight my H and I'm going to hold the mouse button down, go all the way to December. I'm going to go to fill, I'm going to go to series, but this time it wants a growth series. That's this guy. See, so it says growth, click. Doesn't say anything about a trend, so I'm not touching trend, but it says a step value of 1.03. So I'm going to type 1.03. It says nothing about a stop value, just hit OK. All right, you should have these numbers. Okay. Finally, it says we can ungroup the worksheets. So if you go down to the tab, any of the tabs, do United States, right click, and first one at the bottom says ungroup sheets. I'm going to click. I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to right click. You notice how it says nothing about being grouped. I'm going to go to Australia and I'm going to right click. Nothing. And right click one more time. That means we're ungrouped. Okay. So number seven, the very beginning is done. Now it says 7A. In cell B6, enter a formula using the sum function and a 3D reference to total the number of downloads of Adventure Audiobooks in January, which is cell B6, in the United States, Canada, and Australia. Okay, now this is the one thing that they don't tell you, which I don't know why we didn't group these. But it's kind of simple. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put my cursor in cell B6. I'm going to type equal SUM and I'm going to begin the parenthesis but leave it alone. I'm on the all locations tab when I'm doing this. All right, now I want you to click, leave it open. I want you to click on the United States tab. I want you to hold down that shift key. I want you to click Canada and click Australia. So you're not doing anything, just clicking on, okay? Let go of that shift key. Go back up to B6, which you're probably on either United States, Canada, or Australia, not all locations. Click on B6. You'll notice that the formula bar changes to have United States with the colon and Australia. That means anything in between them two tabs are selected. And then we're referencing B6. I'm going to come over to here to the function line and I'm going to do the little check mark, which is enter. Okay, check. And you'll notice it fills in this N, but you're on the all locations tab. So it automatically flips you over to the all locations tab. All right, now it wants you to 7B, copy the formula in cell B6 to calculate the number of downloads for the other type of books. Okay, this is B7 to B11. So I need to do B7 to B11, right? Okay, so I'm going to keep my cursor inside B6. I'm going to hit the copy. I'm going to highlight B7 to B11 because that's where it wants me to put it. I'm going to go up to the paste, but instead of just clicking paste, I'm going to do the, the drop down. I'm going to drop down. And the second one, see how it says the FX? It just does the formula. It doesn't change the way it looks, so I'm going to click on this one. 
Then it says, copy the formula in cell B6 to C6 to E11. Okay, well that means this all the way to here. Okay, so I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to do the FX. And it should fill in the rest of the table. Okay, it wants us to do the same thing we just did for this B6, but we're going to do it to B16. Now, if you notice, you have a little uh, March and Ants around your January B6 still. Click anywhere on the worksheet and then click the escape key and that'll take that off. Okay, so 7C says in cell B16, enter a formula using the sum function. So like I said before, it's going to be just like the B6 one. So I'm going to click on B16 and I'm going to do equal sum, beginner, parenthesis. I'm going to go click over to United States, hold the shift button down, click Canada and Australia. I'm going to click B16, and then I'm going to come up to the formula bar Make sure it says United States colon Australia with the B16 and then hit the little check mark for enter. And it should automatically go to all locations tab and that number should be in there. Okay. And it wants to do the same thing with the copy. So copy, hold the mouse key down, highlight this, come over to paste formula only. Come over to here, highlight all this, come over to paste formula only. Click anywhere on the page and then click the escape key to get rid of your little March and Ants. Okay, so that's all of seven. Eight wants us to do a round up function. Now in the training it only shows you a round function, but it works the same exact way. So it says, Olivia wants to round the total sales values so that they are easier to remember. So in cell B22, all right, well, B22 is down here, in the All Locations tab, add the roundup function to display the total sales for January, round it up to zero decimal places. So in other words, it wants it to be 185,277 done. No 75 cents, just zero zeros, okay? So it already has a formula in it. I'm going to go in between my equal and sum. I'm going to type the word round up and I'm going to do a beginner parenthesis. I'm going to go to the very, very end. And because if you think of it like math, it's a parenthesis inside a parenthesis formula. Okay. So I'm working on the outside formula. I'm going to do a comma and then a zero for no decimal places, and then I'm going to end the parenthesis, and I'm going to hit enter. There you go. See my two zeros? Okay, now, 8B says do the rest of the whole entire thing. Well, we know that if I get my little plus guy and I go all the way over, it'll automatically do it. All right, good. Now, 9. 9 wants us to reference to a file that is outside. So the first thing you're going to have to do is open the support file. So let's see, I'm going to go to open. I'm going to go to my downloads, my downloads. Where's downloads? downloads and I'm going to get the support and I'm going to open it up. Okay. All right. 